2014 CTIA trade show in Las Vegas. My name is Alina Seljuk. I'm a tech reporter uh, for Reuters. I'm here uh, with Sheila Jordan, who is the chief information officer at Symantec, uh, largest security software company in the world. Um, you've been only with Symantec for about seven months, but a lot has happened since then, a lot's going on. Um, can you uh, kind of catch us up on yeah. what you've been up to in sure. the past seven months? Sure. So um, first of all, I'd like to just state that I think the IT industry right now is the most exciting uh, time in IT and the changes that are occurring in the IT industry as a whole is really quite exciting. Uh, for example, when I think about the five things that are converging at, at a very accelerated pace, there it really is mobility, it's data, so structured and unstructured data, it's how we think about identities, personal and professional identities, it's how we think about cloud, cloud applications and data center, as well as the Internet of Things. So in IT, we're all thinking about each one of those, one, those, each one of those uh, areas kind of discreetly, and we're planning our plans and our, our roadmaps accordingly. But when you put them all together, when you think about mobile and then the Internet of Things, and you think about cloud with data and unstructured data, the thing that, con that makes this convergence so exciting is the flow of data through all of that. So as an IT professional, we th we're thinking about more mobile devices in the enterprise. We're thinking about more cloud applications. So our role really is about managing and securing the data and information, our company's largest and most important asset. So the whole notion of security and unified security, I think, is a, a very exciting task to take on right now. You talk about it like it's so easy to do. Oh, <laughs> we're just securing your data, nothing to see here. But it, it's a very big challenge. And you know, to hear a lot of the security experts talk, um, right now, more than ever, uh, your, your data is under threat. Um, we hear a lot about large breaches. Um, a couple of days ago, Home Depot confirmed mm -hmm. that they're working with you uh, to analyze the latest uh, breach. Can you talk about the role that your company plays when somebody like Home Depot comes to you and says, we might have been breached, it could be really a big deal, we're really not sure what's going on, what can you do um, and how do you provide that assurance to your clients and then consumers out there that what you do is actually working? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree and I think that, so Symantec really has a service that we actually provide that kind of intelligence threat, threat information that we do a lot of an analysis on. In fact, last year the Internet Security Threat Report was issued because of all the information and all the intelligence that we gather. So it really is we're, we're perfectly positioned to be that company that when someone does have a breach to come and ask us for some advice and counsel on that. But I will say that, yes, all these things are changing in the pace of how the mobile devices are increasing and the Internet of Things is increasing, but so also are the increases in threats, in fact, or, or attacks. In fact, the security threat report mentioned that the threats are actually increasing, the duration is longer, and the the bad guys are smarter. So we really have to make sure that we're preparing our technologies to address that. One of the big technologies that Symantec has to offer um, is, is an antivirus mm -hmm. um, uh, software that often comes bundled um, with uh, PCs. A lot of experts are starting to question whether antivirus is, in fact, a good way to um, tackle the threats that are, that are more flexible, like you're right. saying, more complicated right. by day. Um, what's the future for antivirus? Are we going to see antivirus transfer, transform into something different, or do we just move on and start protecting networks further upstream? Right. No, antivirus is foundational. What I think we're, we're in a position of saying is it's not because of all the, the differences of the device coming in, because of the increase of the data, it's not antivirus only. We have to get smarter and smarter about what we're seeing and the usage of security almost at every layer of an IT architecture. So what I mean by that is you've got the network and infrastructure layer and all the way to the devices that you're trying to protect and secure as well. So what that means is we're going to need uh, antivirus plus plus. So you think about our advanced threat protection solutions, our data loss backup solutions. So we've got a, we've got a, we've got a whole like uh, solutioning or uh, a set of technologies that really are going to be used to work together to secure the environment. Can we talk a bit about consumers versus companies yeah. like Home Depot? I mean, the threat level is different, I assume, um, or you would hope so. Um, and then the steps that you can take are different. So if I am just a lovely Alina Seljuk who has a personal right. PC and I want to make sure I'm protected, presumably my steps are going to be a lot simpler than 
for a company like Home Depot with exposure to multiple places where hackers could could get in on. Can you talk about what a consumer can do versus what a yeah. business should do? So I have two kids in college, so it comes with a with a mindset of some millennials, but uh, the millennial set. But I will say that I don't think consumers in general are protecting themselves as much as they need to. In fact, we just did a report that said literally one in two on mobile devices don't have enough protection as a consumer on their mobile device. So that's that's kind of sad because I think what, what we need to do is educate consumers that you have to protect your identity. It's your identity. And when you think about it, we, we teach our kids to cross the streets the right way. We teach them hygiene. We teach them not to talk to ba the, the, the bad guys or people you don't know or strangers. So we have to begin teaching our children in the younger generation how important their identity is, how important their personal identity is, and not be so free to share their password with someone else or to give up their, their identity or let someone log in. I mean, it's simple things like that that I think, you know, we just need to create this additional awareness on it. So that's the consumer side. Clearly, the enterprise is much more complicated. Uh, you've got both, from an IT perspective, we're always trying to protect the company's assets. You've got all sorts of data coming in, the structured data from your ERP systems and your CRM systems and all the information transactional system. Now you have unstructured data coming in from social and LinkedIn and Twitter. And so we have lots of avenues where information is coming into the organization. And we have to make sure, OK, lots of avenues where data is coming in. But we also have all these new endpoints and new devices. And you know, we just saw it today with Apple's announcement, we're going to even have more devices than the Internet of Things and watches and everything else. So, so it really has become even more complicated in the enterprise to make sure that you are securing yourselves in the enterprise at, at, at the network layer, but all the way to the devices as well. Can you draw a connection between the consumer's behavior and the enterprise behavior? So, yeah. I mean, I know you can't talk about specific companies, but in the instance like a Target or like a, a Home Depot, the exposure to so many consumers all have credit cards and all putting in data, does that play a role in the security of the enterprise as a whole, or are those two things kind of separate and the enterprise can do its own thing? Well, I think, again, I go back to with consumers and my employees within Symantec, there's a level of education that has to continue happening. So with security in general, it's not only about the technology, it's about technology, education, and training. So this whole awareness and education has to happen whether you're a consumer or even an employee. I mean, sometimes someone might accidentally leave their laptop you know, mm -hmm. somewhere or their, their phone somewhere. We've got to make sure that people understand how important the security of what they're working on. I mean, even if they're working on their computer and they're around a bunch of people and they're working on something that's confidential. So we have to continue increasing the awareness of how important the information is as an employee and as a consumer. You mentioned a stream of new products coming in, particularly um, internet-connected devices that are mobile, um, you know, phones, tablets, watches, right. all kinds of health gadgets. <laughs> now they're connecting homes and appliances around the house. <laughs> Can we ever keep all that stuff safe? Well, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna. I, I think we're gonna have to. I honestly think that we're gonna need to get just smarter about um, the the having a unified security approach on that data, but also what we don't talk a lot about, which I think is just as important, is we got to get smarter within the enterprise on deleting data. You know, for lots of reasons, and whether you're in a financial institution or even a medical or even in healthcare, is this rules why we have to keep certain data for a certain amount of time and archiving it in, in the duration. And I actually think that's, that could be becoming a risk. So I think we got to get smart in the enterprise about what data do you really need for what duration and begin to delete some of the information so you really are dealing with the more real-time information that can help you make decisions. Is that something that you're telling your clients when they come to you already or is that something you're hoping the, inter the, the businesses like yours can well, get to Well, I think it's eventually? kind of both. One of the things I'm thinking about right now is um, I'm insourcing IT right now. We had historically outsourced it. And one of the things I'm looking at is I don't want to take all that, all the things that I don't necessarily need to run the business anymore so I am going through a, a deletion process, both on the databases, applications, I mean, things that I just don't need that are legacy. And I think most IT professionals are going, you know, one of the things that in this complicated world in running an enterprise is we have to figure out ways where we can reduce complexity and simplify things. Um, the, 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 I, the, the smartphones and the devices make things look really simple, but there's a whole bunch of things that are happening behind the scenes, and we have a mobile architecture behind that that makes that run. So in IT, what I'm always trying to do is to make sure we're you know, 
really trying to simplify the experience and simplify the architecture. So when I can delete certain elements of it, it makes it, it, makes it better. Is it the same process to secure a cell phone, a smartphone, a smart device versus um, you know, more familiar PCs in, of the past? Oh, it's a separate process. It's a very separate process. You have a, What's you, the big challenge? You, well, usually you have more software on your PCs than you do typically on the smartphones. So you've got different technologies and different tools to use. The other thing I would say is in the, in the smartphones, you have something called mobile device management. So you want to make sure that you're protecting the mobile device itself and all the applications on it. In fact, Symantec has this great sealed app program that once we can seal the application, whether that's um, one of our content sharing systems or something else, we can actually secure the application as well as the device. And that's where I think it gets, it gets, it gets a little challenging is in this new world, we've got to make sure we're securing the data, the application, and the devices. And that's what's happening on the mobile front. That's what I was wondering. You, you, you talk about the PCs having more programs. And the traditional networks, when you think about them, you think of them being very complicated. So it's hard to understand you know, if we can secure these networks, and we've been doing that for years, you know, what's going on with the, with, the, with the market for mobile and wireless devices where the competition seems to be completely different for companies like I yours. think what's happened in the past, even with Semantic, is we had a lot of point solutions. And what we're starting to see now is a more integrated solution that secures, like the whole mobile security is, is an integrated solution that's also modular. So you can pick and choose the things that you want but you can also get the entire integrated solution together. So that's what I think is going to make things easier for the IT professional when we go forward is having more, more solutions versus, more point, versus the point products. How much, I know you haven't been in your role as CIO at Semantic for very long, but from your experience at Cisco where you came from, how much do you work with the US government on issues like this? Sort of how much interaction is there um, between the government and the private sector in terms of securing particularly the wireless networks, which are the critical infrastructure yeah. of this country. Yeah, so I would say in both cases, my companies work very directly. The government is a customer in both cases. I and IT, where I'm internally focused, don't deal much with the government directly. But in both cases, the government is a very big customer. In your personal life, <laughs> completely jumping subjects, but in your personal life, um, as someone who is completely well-versed in the security field, how do you protect yourself, you personally? And can you, do you feel like you're 100% safe in everything that you do online? Well, I think, you know, you try, you, you try, so you use all the technologies that we have in the Norton virus, uh, Norton products that we have at our home computers. But I think what I would say is you've got to be extra careful about your identity. You have to be, extra, especially when you're traveling abroad, I've noticed, you, know, you just have to make sure you and nearly notify the credit card companies that you're traveling and things like that. I think that, um, you got to take extra precautions and letting you know people know when you're traveling. I think you've got to be really careful about where you might leave, you know, accidentally leave. You, you just can't leave your your PC or your phone or something out in the open. So I think it's really taking those additional precautions. And again, I go back to, you know, I know it sounds silly, but changing your password frequently. You know, thinking about all those things that you know, don't giving your password to others, don't letting them log in for you. You know, my daughter will come home and ask me what my passwords are, and I think you've got to really make sure that. If that you know, that's that's an awareness that you want to make that that stop. Do you of. tell your daughter you can't share yes, your password? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> what does she say? <laughs> well, why, then you open it. <laughs> gotcha. Well, thanks so very much for taking the time to talk You're to us welcome. about security. You're very welcome.